everybody and welcome to another episode of Converse and Cocktails. This is a show where we drink, we learn sometimes, we talk shit, maybe we laugh, um, but we definitely drink. So today's guest <laughs> is Dr. Katlejo Lekalakala. Yes. Oh, period. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm so nervous. It's not that so difficult. Many L's and K's. It's not when you, sl- when you like... Yeah, anyway. when you think about it, it's like chakalaka. <laughs> I love that. Honestly, that's Dr. how Dr. Kaneko Chakalaka is in the house. <laughs> um, <laughs> so before we get started on your bio, on the information on why you're here, what is this cocktail and uh, why did you all, oh, this is a margarita, why did you choose a margarita? Um, I just love it. It makes me feel sexy. Oh, no, I love sexy. tequila. Okay. Yeah, yeah. tequila makes me feel sexy, okay. honestly. Um, it also is an easy drink. It's not too sweet, mm-hmm. right? It's tangy. Um, although I don't always like tangy things, but it just works. It works very well for me. It doesn't give me hangovers. Okay. Big thing. To feeling sexy. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Clink, clink. Um, yeah. I think this is like the second margarita I'm having this season and I don't like tequila that much, but, um, I'm don't not you? mad at it in a margarita. So I found, so when you postpartum, um, you really struggle. Mm. You you get drunk like really quickly. <laughs> okay. Um, and you get hungover really quickly. This has not been like so bad with mm. me since postpartum. Yeah. The other stuff kind of are hard on me. So yeah. yeah, I prefer it. I also do know tequila to be that person, but I just, the taste of like just the shot. Ow. Yeah. Anyway, our guest today, like I said, is Dr. Katajo. She is a doctor. Obviously, by the name. Do we call you Dr. Katlejo the whole time? Or is it just Katlejo? Like, what do you Please call me Katlejo. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes people want to be doctor. Like, I was talking to the producer and um, the guy who owns the studio, Marco, and we were like, yeah. if we, like, were doctors, we, that would be what we make people call us. Like, you're going to call me Dr. Lesoha. I studied for seven years. That's it. Even yeah. in Groove. Like, hi, I'm Dr. Lesoha. <laughs> <laughs> I won't lie, though. I do use it to get into places. Exactly. Um, yeah. We know how shallow the world is. <laughs> Especially in Cape Town. Yeah. That's like my thing. No, actually, at some point, you even were like, I'm going to run two minutes late, which is so perfect because the rest of the guests, I won't even tell you how late they were. But um, I was like, oh, no, I trust her. She's a doctor. She'll be here. He was like, you see, that's so nice. Like, you get away it, with it's things. It's so nice. <laughs> you, like, get trusted because you're a doctor. Yeah, people think I'm, like, so reliable. And I'm like, I'm such a ditzy, like, person. Like, it's so <laughs> hilarious. That is so great. Anyway, the reason why we've called her here today is because she is one of the founders, the founder. Yeah, I'm the only founder. The only founder yeah. of Clueless Moms, which is a community online built by mothers for mothers or by a mother for mothers. Um, it's a place where you can chat, you can navigate through motherhood, ask questions. Not necessarily that she'll give the answer, but I've seen that she shares sometimes. And I guess the community of moms sometimes yeah. come up with answers. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I didn't think I'd have this episode because I myself, I'm not a mom and I don't plan on being one. But I think the followers, you know, some people are. And I think it's just a really interesting, important discussion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Around being a young mom. It's like very yourself. inclusive of you. I like that. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to go through some of, um, first of all, the questions just from our guests here as a bit of an expert. But obviously, you're just a mom yourself. You're not a psychologist or, you know, someone who studied this thing. You no. just happen to be a mom. So many of the answers are from her experience. Um, and if she doesn't know, she doesn't know. If you do, you do. If you can recommend someone for whom to go look at, you know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, the first topic I wanted to discuss is friendships after a baby. And the reason why I want to start here is because I have friends who are mothers. Yeah. And sometimes the friendships have changed and sometimes they haven't. For you, have you found that your friendships with non-mothers has changed since you became a mom? Yeah. Yeah, actually. Um, I, you know, when you, when you enter motherhood, you feel very lost in that whole space. Um, I mean, we speak about this all the time that you, you start to go back on a journey of trying to rediscover who you were before. And you kind of have to mourn that person because you are a different person now, Mm. you know, as much as they are still some parts. So not everybody can reconcile with that. And it's not easy for everybody to navigate around that. Um, I actually had friendship breakups. Um, I think. Maybe like six months into my parenting. Mm-hmm. It wasn't nice. I won't lie to you. It really wasn't nice. Um, that made me feel more insecure than my body. Okay. Um, but it was like coupled with it because all my friends at that time were like really hot girls. Um, they still are. They're very beautiful hot girls. I and mean, as are you. 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> I didn't feel that way. Yeah. Honestly, I really didn't feel that way. I felt very out of place. And I remember the last time I hung out with them, um, we were out at like a, a, a very famous or popular spot in Joburg mm. on a Sunday, St. Sundays. Mm. Um, I don't know if I can say that. You and um, I don't know if you've been there on a Sunday. Once or twice, but it's a very overwhelming place. It it's is, a right? Very full and it's, and overwhelming it's place. very sexy. Mm. It's like it girls, hot girls of yeah. Joburg, you know? And I remember, um, I guess we were going through the breakup and we hadn't had the conversation. And then I was like there. And honestly, I, I looked... I, I felt very uncomfortable. Mm. I was wearing a long dress because I was trying to cover up. It was black. It just didn't make sense. I looked like I was coming from a funeral. <laughs> and I had my Afro out. It was beautiful. Mm. But, like, I didn't even style it, like, that nicely. Mm. You know, I started like like a child. And I felt so out of place. And they looked so gorgeous. But they were, like, over me. Mm. And oh, they made it very clear, you know. And it felt kind of like high school. Mm. Um, because only the one girl was talking to me and I got like weird remarks from another one. It was just like very... So it was giving you can't sit with us, mean girl energy type of thing. Yeah. It was very... That was like the hardest thing Mm. I feel like I had to go through after my um, giving birth to my child. And then God finds a community for you Mm -hmm. somehow. And how did you find your new community of moms? And was it specifically just new friends or was it all new moms? So mostly new moms mm-hmm. and new friends. Um, and some people, it was like they were there. And then it's like, okay, now we have like a, a, sh- a shared belief or um, we have common ground yeah. so we can talk about. Um, and it's not saying that all my friends are are, are mothers, mm-hmm. right? I still have my old friends who were excited mm-hmm. about the baby and are still so excited about my child and really just want to be around her yeah. and really just want to engage with her. Um, and that's so awesome to see. And then, yes, the community, especially on Instagram, I did find a community of mm-hmm. friends, really, um, and it extended into real life. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. how I There are people like us who, you know, want to be supportive of your mother friend, um, someone who's become a new mom. Mm. And yes, you said you want to be around your child all the time. It's very difficult sometimes to navigate the new friendship because now we're like, girl is not picking up the phone or she's not coming through to any of the things or she's not at my birthday. How would you give advice or would you, what would you say to um, new moms and to the friends to support each other, I guess, on this new thing? Because moms do have to st- sometimes show up, um, but obviously friends need to give a lot of grace to to new moms. Yeah, I think having conversations is very important mm-hmm. um, because a lot gets lost in translation, right? So communicate your needs to each other so I need you in this way this is my capabilities this is what I'm able to do and I wish I had done that um even like with my friends that are not my friends anymore I do see fault in myself in that um I isolated myself and there was a disconnect they just couldn't connect with me anymore you know um and yeah so I I feel like communicating is very important. Um, and also, if you can show up, really show up. It it really does a lot for you because then it reminds you of the person that you used to be because you really can get lost in that world of being a mother. And like, I mean, at that time, I was like sticky because I had leaking boobs and I was breastfeeding all the time. And I was so hot for. Can I say that? You can. So you can. You can swear. You can say whatever. I can swear? <laughs> can. Okay. I was so khatfo <laughs> and I just really wanted to be out. Um, but I didn't realize that I was forcing things at that time. But honestly, um, as much as people should show you grace, mm-hmm. also show them grace yeah. in that they they have an expectation of you as you have an expectation of them. Mm. So as a new mom, I just really say um, communicate, be open with your friends and tell them how to best support you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. I think we've spoken a, a nice bit about friendships. Um, I'm going to ask you some of the other questions that people submitted. And again, if you don't have an answer, it's cool. Um, yeah. This person says, my baby is 10 months, really sweats a lot, especially when drinking. Oh, drinking bottles. <laughs> I was like, not your baby drinking. Um, his head yeah. is permanently wet. Is it normal? So some children do sweat a lot mm. um, um, when they are drinking Uh, or when they're feeding because people don't realize feeding is some sort of an exercise right um if she is really that worried she can take the child to the pediatrician Mm -hmm. um 
like I really don't want to diagnose a child. Yeah, especially when um, you can't see them. Yeah, it's very difficult. Um, there are some heart conditions that are related to um, children like sweating more profusely. But a lot of the time you find that it's completely normal and it's just because of the energy release. Yeah. That's it. I mean, basically, if you want to take it, the child's yeah. doctor. If um, the child is like happy playing, able to feed all the time and is tolerating the feeds, then I, don't, I really don't think you should. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be something that you bring up at your next um, consultation, even with the sisters that are giving the immunization. Okay. And that's something that I really want to highlight. Yes. Um, people kind of undermine um, the nurses mm-hmm. and they are normally the best people to go to because they have a better better understanding of mm-hmm. children and they see these children a lot mm. so they can tell you what's normal and what's not okay. yeah Thank you very much. Um, this one, yo, I know my mommy friends get sick and tired to death, especially the ones who share with their with their communities online. How do you block out the noise as a first time mom? Everyone has opinions about your baby. I'm sure with as many followers as you have and as much <laughs> of near that you share, yeah, everybody has an opinion about yeah. something you're doing wrong, something you could do better, something. How do you block out the noise and just get people to mind their own business? I tell them off. Oh, hectic. Okay. Yeah, I love I'll that tell for you. you. I'll tell you off. Mm. Um, so as much as I'm sharing my life online, you don't own my life. Mm. And you don't know a real, like the huge part of it. Yeah. You're only getting snippets of it, right? Yeah. You don't know the bigger picture. Um, like I mean, I remember <laughs> in the beginning of sharing Nia, yeah, um, someone came into my comments, you know, into my DMs, she was like, um, how do you feel staying with your man and you're not even married. Oh, no. And not 1987. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, you're not even, you haven't even gone home to actually do it the right way. And I was like, I'm doing it my way. And that's the right way in my life. Um, they don't get blocked though. I don't block people. I don't block people. Love that for you. I do. No, but I it don't. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. Yeah, it takes a lot. Like, like you have to really swear at me. So, so that person just needed, um, has a belief system that is mm. not aligned to mine. I don't think she tried to offend me. Yeah. She did overstep. And all you do is you bring her back to the step and you just tell her, <laughs> <laughs> bring her back to the step and just tell her, babes, this is where you and I meet. Mm-hmm. This is where you and I differ. Let's not go into those exactly. areas. And also, and just leave it at it's that. my life. Yeah, it's my life. Um, and I'm very happy with my life. I'm very happy um, being with my partner the way we are. Mm. I really don't think you need to be married yeah. um, for you to have the best family life mm. um because there's also people who are very lonely in their marriages very and there are also people raising kids i always say there's sometimes there's single raising moms kids. who are married yeah like, and i think that's the worst there's a lot of that i've seen that yeah. a lot and it's very sad mm. it's very very sad i think my boyfriend is a single parent <laughs> in, your, in your relationship my fiance sorry <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, before we continue with the questions, I actually just want to ask you about your personal journey, however much you're willing to share. Yeah. First of all, what happened when you found out you were pregnant? Was this like elation? Were you like, oh my God, what's going to happen? What was your journey from, and how did you find out you were pregnant? Yeah, that's quite interesting. Okay. So we were naughty. Um, <laughs> I had gotten off my contraceptive um, mm-hmm. because in actual fact, you shouldn't be on contraceptive for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, Does this had, include like the physical ones like IUD or you mean the hormonal ones? No, no. So IUD, you should be on it mm-hmm. for um, the five years or the three years. Mm-hmm. Depends on which one you're on. So I'm um, just really worried because I'm like, what? <laughs> and the implant, Yeah. Um, I'm just talking about the pill. Okay. The pill, you actually shouldn't be on it like for, it's not like a chronic medication. You can't be on it for like years. Okay. And I was on it for like three years. Mm-hmm. It had started to um, alter my mood mm-hmm. and my libido was like like tanking in the beginning of my relationship. It yeah. was like tanking, you know? So I got off of it at some point and I was just like, I want to be free of all of this. And then, yeah, we did what I else do. Um, I remember the day. So was your thinking also, if I get pregnant, it's okay? No, okay. Okay. I was naughty. Okay. No, it was wrong. Um, we did um, old school family planning. Pull out. Uh, yeah, pull out. <laughs> the PO. Um, so yeah, you know what? We were also planning around ovulation, right? Okay. And I remember this day mm-hmm. i said to him now we're good <laughs> and we actually weren't good uh, i remember the day we conceived yeah so after that i felt kind of like sick and i remember we went to cape town and i got so sloshed 
I got so sloshed. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I was so. It was like unlike me. I think that happens a lot. That's a, that's a yes. lot of people's story. And I had like a lot of indigestion and nausea. Mm. I really think nausea is really terrible if you're not vomiting. Yeah. Um. So we had done the pregnancy testing where I take the pregnancy test and then I get my period. So I felt the premenstrual symptoms mm. or syndrome, right? And I was like, oh man, I need my period to come. I didn't think I was pregnant. And how I tested, I had had wine and I had pasta. I couldn't stomach that pasta. And I literally sat in the dark because we were having load shedding. And oh. I just peed on a stick. I was alone, one man, nine o'clock in the evening. I'll never forget. And literally I was so pregnant that I, I didn't even fully pull it out from between my legs. Yeah. And, and I already, already saw showing. the two lines. Oh, yeah. Hectic. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then I called my mom and I was like, mom, listen, it's happening. I, I had to rip off the bandaid because I knew she was going to be pissed off. Yeah. So I called her immediately and I was like, listen, I'm pregnant. She's like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm pregnant. I'm like, actually, I'm not stressed about you. I'm more stressed about Dumelo mm. because he was going through a transition in his career yeah. that we really honestly couldn't afford each other mm. at that time. Um, but yeah. Had you been together like a while? Um, yeah uh, okay. yeah yeah so when i celebrated it was so cute when i celebrated our three-year mm -hmm. relationship i celebrated that we're now becoming three. Oh, hectic yeah we're now that's five years serendipitous in. as hell oh my god it's so cute <laughs> our lives have been so cute our like couplehood has been so cute honestly it was the little icing on our cake mm -hmm. um he was so warm about it um, then he he obviously went through a little bit of a shock. Yeah. Um, it wasn't nice for him. And I was very moody. Mm. I was very, very moody. And I was very angry. Don't know why I was that angry. I'm, Hormones, babes. Yeah, but I was very angry. And like they sicken you. Like your man sickens you. Like Listen, I've been like not full term pregnant but I've been it and I was exactly where you were you were disgusted right little amount of time I chose to not yeah, yeah. and you get disgusted yeah. right so I was very disgusted with him and <laughs> it was like it was shame I, I really feel bad like I, I think back to that time and I just felt sick um, so that time was kind of like awkward and then we got the sweet spot and it was just like beautiful from there but yeah I had a tumultuous pregnancy Okay, so for you, when you were feeling these feelings, um, was termination ever an option for you? Or were you just like, you know what? Ride or die, we're here now. Um, no, I wanted her. Okay. I've always wanted to have a child. You actually commented on something that I, I once put out. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, I, I've, I didn't have the guts to make her. Yeah. I've never had the guts to make her because I didn't think that I could get pregnant. I didn't think I could... Um, have the guts to give birth. Um, so once she was there, once I knew she was there, I felt very blessed. And I was like, okay, no, I'm definitely doing this. That's incredible. Now you're in this relationship, amazing relationship. How much did being pregnant um, change, if anything, your relationship with, um, with your partner? It almost broke us. It almost broke us. Um, so it brought us very close but mm. it also separated us so when we we're going through the issues um he was so supportive mm. he he didn't miss any appointment i think he only missed one because he was traveling yeah. um but he was always there always always there um but he was going through his own situation mm. which i can understand yeah. it wasn't planned and um, there was never a second that I thought that he would never be there for me and the child. But I think a, a lot was happening yeah. in his mind and also a lot was happening in my mind. And I wasn't really um, giving that time a lot of light, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so we have these these hectic um, um, hurdles in our pregnancy. They make me very anxious mm -hmm. And I become really angry and irritable. And he can't be around someone that's yeah. irritable. Um, I mean, none of us can. Shun. Yeah. So it was it was quite tough. I won't lie. We broke up at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we broke up for a day. But we broke up. <laughs> Not a day. <laughs> but it was, a, it was a real breakup. My yeah. mom had to intervene. We had to have a proper intervention. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> clearly it day. was God. Because, uh, I mean, in a day? Yeah, a that's day. A, and then you yeah, were like, Yeah, it nah. was a day. Just and, <laughs> Yeah, it was a day and it was hard. 
Um, but I thought I was done. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, I'm just going to move out with this kid. And he was like, no, that is not happening. Yeah. I'll pull up my socks. And he did. He did. Um, um, after my child, I will say that our relationship is 10 times better. Mm. Actually, speaking of that now, I know a lot of parents, it must be so hard to kind of figure out you and your partner when you have a baby to also take care of. And a lot of moms, to their credit, make everything about their lives kind of become about their child, sometimes to the neglect of their relationship. So do you have any sort of advice or like things that you can share in how to keep your relationship as gold and solid as it is while still obviously having a new member? Um, Have sex. Mm Mm-hmm. Have sex. <laughs> That's have advice sex. for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have sex. Have sex. Yeah. Honestly, um, having sex in the in the beginning is tough. Um, if you is were like, physically so or mentally? Yeah, yeah. Physically okay. for me, um, personally, because I had a soot lodge mm-hmm. and we couldn't have sex nope, before. Explain because I have no idea. Oh, sorry. It. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> we're not in I do this girl. a lot. I do this a lot. <laughs> um, so I had a stitch to keep my baby in. Okay. Right. To keep your baby in. Yeah, I That's have. Amazing. I have an insufficient cervix, so it opens up. So no, case, guys, there's so much that can happen in pregnancy. Why yeah, do you do this? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to explain it in like the easiest way, yeah. right? So the cervix is basically the door to mm-hmm. the womb. Okay. It has to open up at the right time to let the child out. Yes. So she can walk out. <laughs> like, well, what up? I'm here, right? With- um, <laughs> so if they open before, if it opens before, you have insufficiency. Okay. Right? So mine shortened and started opening. Very early. So I was going to lose her. So then I had to go for an emergency stitch. Um, so I couldn't have sex because... Um, you have a stitch. <laughs> yeah, I have a... St- no, not even that. He was never going to feel it. No, were you, were you not going to feel it? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, no, no. No, no. The cervix, you, you don't oh, feel it. Oh, it's on the cervix. You don't feel I thought cervix. it was in the opening, my babe. Sorry. No. Yeah, what? Yeah. I don't know. My vagina? I don't fucking know. No. I just, I don't know. No. What did you think was happening <laughs> to know. me? No. That one, you know the one where, it, like, I guess it's after birth, but it, they cut from the your, perineum. The per- that's what I thought it was. Okay, we're talking about something else. Okay. No, 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 You are talking about guys, like, pregnancy you know, is these wild. actual practices in other countries, like in like African countries. Like, like we live in circumcision. Africa. Like no. the female circumcision, you mean? Where yeah, they, like, close it up. Where they close it yeah, up. No, that's yeah, ter- that's, that's terrible. Terrible. Yeah, that's terrible. Even, that did not happen to me. Another day, another. It didn't anyway. happen to me, guys. <laughs> I just need to put it out there. Please don't send me a GoFundMe. You can, though. You <laughs> I can. Mean, you can. So, yeah, so I had the stitch. Um, so we couldn't have sex during my pregnancy. So for those of you who are having sex during your pregnancy, oh, you're so lucky. You're so lucky. In fact, it's called Everyone female says, genital mutilation. I'm so sorry. Anyway, yes, mutilation. And um, a lot of people enjoy sex mm-hmm. during pregnancy. I wish I had that. Um, so afterwards, um, because you're breastfeeding, you can struggle with dryness because mm-hmm. your estrogen levels are down. Mm-hmm. So I struggled with dryness. It literally felt like I was a virgin again Mm -hmm. it was not nice it was uncomfortable for him Mm -hmm. it was uncomfortable for me it was not cute someone had promised me that i was gonna like spray milk and i was excited about that part (laughs) during sex just yeah i thought i was gonna have like little milk sprinklers (laughs) i didn't get that is he supposed to also be catching yeah (laughs) (laughs) but i didn't get it i was really sad why did you want that that is so wild (laughs) because i'm a wild kid okay wild kid guys i am a doctor but i'm a wild girl (laughs) so have sex um Talk to your man. Date um, nights, They also need to talk to you. Also, guys, as much as you taking responsibility, men need to also take responsibility with communicating. Mm-hmm. Communicate. You both communicate, yeah. right? Um, tell him what you want. Hear him what he wants. Um, your anxiousness makes you irritable. By the way, that's why you're irritable. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then, yeah, um, your baby will always be there. Your baby will be well taken care of. I feel like... When the partner is very involved, yeah. it's very easy to get into back into feeling in love again. Mm-hmm. But there's definitely that divide. I mean, like now, I mean, talking about like right now, we have a toddler and we are struggling with sleep. Mm. So it really kind of is killing that intimacy in that, in that part. Like we can't really cuddle at nights because she's in the middle of us. We sleep in separate beds because she sleeps sideways. Yeah. So one person has to choose. And she's very obsessed with her father, which is very cute during the day. At night, not that cute. Mm. So yeah, I don't know. And go out on dates. But sex is the m- biggest thing. Yeah. Try try go back. Um, your libido will definitely feel low, but you can build up on your libido. Mm. The more you have sex, you'll build up on your libido. Yeah. Okay. So actually, there's a question that kind of goes to that, yeah. um, which is, 
our baby sleeps in the same bed, how do we have sex? We Is there a way? Um, they don't have another room? I shouldn't explain the rest. Well, I mean, be a little bit adventurous, right? I know, I have a friend who sleeps with a man, mm-hmm. with a baby in the bed. And I don't judge her, but I kind of... <laughs> I mean, they can, what do they see? Come on. <laughs> Even if they open an eye, it's like, <laughs> mommy and daddy are playing at this point. <laughs> um, maybe they might have to invest in a camp cot. Your, your relationship can't suffer because you have a child. Mm. And your relationship can't just be about your child. Unfortunately, your child is their own person. You yeah. know how they say that y- your child is a person that comes through you, mm-hmm. is not of you? So they have their own lives that they have to live. Yeah. Still go back. Your your partner needs that. You need it. And also, a lot of people like to like to uh, make it about the man. Like, oh, your man needs sex. No, you, you need, need sex. sex. Girl. You need sex. Um, I've actually spoken about this on my Dr. K mm-hmm. um, page the 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 benefits of sex um it's very important during pregnancy or just in general just in general as a human being it relieves your stress it makes you think better it actually helps with gut health which Mm -hmm. i found very weird it helps with your immunity found very weird okay um helps with your energy it's a form of exercise it'll get you up it gets you revitalized I mean, like, I think I, it adds I'm, to your confidence and self. Like, honestly, when you, you it, just, does. it does, it does, it does. And I'm going to use a word or a phrase that my husband has been using, fiance husband, <laughs> <laughs> not the blushing, <laughs> has been using for he this, or her husband, girl, he or her husband, is, fine. has been using for this past month. It's so annoying. He always says, increase your luck surface area. I will. But honestly, when you have sex, it increases your luck surface area because you're so confident. You attract so mm-hmm. many people towards you. Yeah. Um, sex is very important in that sense. So and it just feels good, bro. Like it, does. My, it feels great. It does. And if it doesn't, find another one. No, <laughs> play with yourself. <laughs> okay. Actually, a lot of people don't realize that sex is a conversation, mm-hmm. right? You can have a great conversation with anyone. Yeah. Um, okay, if it's boring, it's boring. Because I was just going to say, sometimes you're just not speaking the same language, no matter yeah. how much you try to translate yeah, yourself. Yeah, 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 right? But if you've gotten there, I hope, I hope you're speaking the same language. <laughs> if you're there, I hope you're speaking the same Let language. Let me tell you something sad. A lot of the people that I'm, um, so I had a sex coach in an yeah. earlier episode. So many women just don't have partners who are willing to even listen. And I think they've gotten to a point where, now they're older. Maybe they met when they were in their 20s and they weren't confident to say something. Mm. But now they're older. Now they're like, you know, I want to explore toys. I want to, and someone's like, oh, no, no toys. I don't want to compete Never with a rubber. I'm just, there's so many people who compete. just have really sad stories. And I hope what? No one can compete with a human being. Imagine. It's different. Your vibrator going to be your vibrator, but a dick on a, like a person? It's, Come on. It's and if you're feeling missionary. weird about it or like, I don't know, jealous? Yeah. You need to like, Check your game. I watched That's Sex, weird. Love, and Goop. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's Not weird. Gwyneth. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, <laughs> she's odd. She's very let's odd. not talk about her. <laughs> I know she's a little cancelled right now. <laughs> she's she odd. Cookie, she lives man. on soup. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Um, but what I loved about that whole show was how they were speaking about how you can really create a conversation. You can create a relationship with your person, mm-hmm. and you just need to understand that it's an art and. Sometimes you dance with a person and you get into the rhythm immediately. And some people just need a little bit of practice. Yeah. But you need to also be willing to put in that, right? And you will find your rhythm if you're willing. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people don't know themselves. So what rhythm are you at? Yeah. Let's start there. What beat are you dancing at? Ma'am, are you dancing to <laughs> yeah? <Quite on? laughs> and he's dancing to gospel. It's not going to work. You yeah. understand? Yeah. So get that <laughs> together. Okay, so now I hear I you are. We, I think we lost. I, I, don't, I don't know, know answer what we question, answered, but, but it's fine. But it's also fine. We get back and we... Yeah. Because the question was actually, how do you have sex in the same bedroom, I think? And oh, you said... Oh, get a camp cot. Get a camp cot. Get a camp cot or... Or fuck during the day when the baby's at school. I don't know, like afternoon yeah. delight. Fuck during the day. It's Let's so meet at the Radisson at two. It's so good for you. Especially if you guys work from home. Do it on your... Don't do it on your desk. <laughs> do it on your chair. Do it on the chest. Do it on the desk. Ah, I have it. It will fall. I'll tell you that. It's a floating desk. It's a good desk. It's a floating desk. I got a good desk. I got a good desk. You're getting dicks and desks. Hey, dicks and desks. That should be season three's name of the podcast. Dicks and desks. Dicks and desks. You're going to be my co host then on Dicks and desks. I am. Okay, so now we are, you know, obviously you experienced, you said you had. 
body confidence issues post baby yeah. you don't feel so much like yourself how do you recommend or how did you come back to feeling like confident is it your partner's thing was it um yeah. i don't know exploring yourself how did you start feeling more confident and sexy because sometimes having sex or not having sex does have to do with how you feel about yourself before so we yeah. said it does give you self-confidence but sometimes you need it to even have it yeah so how did you start feeling like old katlaho again so I haven't. I'm not old Gatlao again. Okay. I won't lie to you. Um, I'm st- I still got like flabs that I'm not happy with. Like mm-hmm. I'm not happy with my tummy. But like I hope he doesn't see this. Mm. We need to block him. Can we block him? We can. Give me his Instagram and then I will... Let's block, block him. Block him from Converse from and Cocktails. <laughs> but I remember we I had- suppose as a supportive husband, a husband yeah. he will watch. But Yeah. We had a session mm-hmm. and I remember he looked at me and he was like, you are so gorgeous and it just felt so good that has like kept me like oh and feeling so good Mm -hmm. he made me feel so good he doesn't even realize this i went why don't you want him to see this that is the nicest thing no he's gonna be like oh why are you telling people our private business no girl that is so sweet yeah but he made me feel so good like the way he looked at me like he just he had come from somewhere else and he came up and I was like, hey there. And he was like, you're so sexy. I will, oh, that was so hot. How he looked at me, everything. And he that looked so, so cute. And he looked so beautiful himself. And, <laughs> um, but he does it a lot. Like he'll look at me like, you're sexy. Mm. You're beautiful. The other day I said to him, ah, oh, I feel fat. And he's like, stop it. He's like, stop it. Mm. Like he's like, Kaz, I get it. You can go to the gym. You, you know, you, if you want to lose pounds, I'm not saying that it's going to make me, I'm not saying like I'm not attracted mm. to you right now. Um, but I really, I want to get sexier for him. Yeah. Because he affirms me. The thing is also with weight, because I've been bigger, I've been smaller, I've yeah. fluctuated my entire life. Yeah. Is it actually, the gym part of it for me was more mental than yeah. it was physical. Because sometimes you will gym for a while and not look a damn bit different. But if you feel confident, because you, I don't know how, obviously endorphins, mental health, yeah. it works. But also your skin looks Because better. sometimes you don't fucking change. And you will do the same things over and over again and go to gym, eat, bite, blah, blah, blah. But it just, the confidence will come yeah. at some point. And yeah, and if your partner also already looks at you like that look at you like that yeah if really do that Beyonce, you see Beyonce and also guys wear your size I said this whole thing mm-hmm. wear your size go out there I wear a size 16 if that makes you feel better I hope it does I wear size six fifty, size 16 and I look great in it when I was trying to fit in a size 12 that I used to fit into I looked stupid <laughs> I am so sorry I look like the Oros man <laughs> I feel so confident now because I wear my size. Yes, look, I had a shopping experience. That's why I was late. Mm -hmm. And it was a terrible experience. You were two minutes late, my God. Relax. Yeah, but I'm (laughs) never late. Um, But I went to, to obviously, the stores that everybody goes to. And I won't lie to you, it's not a nice experience. Mm -hmm. So also find your stores. Zara is See, not that's fast. That's the thing also that is so irritating about it's how so fast irritating, but you have to accept it. Is. Now we gotta fight. Because We're for me, fighting. I'm just like, there's no way everybody can enjoy fashion except bigger girls or enjoy certain fashion. Girl, it irritates me so much. I speak about it, but like right now, if you can't change it, don't try go there and depress yourself. Mm. I'm done Sad. with that. Like, I'm done with it. Like, People look so cute in certain outfits. I know I'd look cute in that outfit. I would look cute in that outfit in my size 16. Please make that outfit in my size 16. I would look so cute in it. I love cargo jeans now. Dumela thinks I'd look stupid in them, but I love them. (laughs) I love them. I love them. them. And they make me feel so good. The Fix has good ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Not me promoting. Promoting stores. No, don't. don't, I'm not promoting. You didn't pay. (laughs) Um, But anyway. So yeah, like um, get your size, wear it, and surround yourself with people who make you feel beautiful. I have a, I've got a friend that literally cries. I don't know, she's so dramatic. I always tell her, I'm like, you're so dramatic. <laughs> she's like, you speak down to yourself and you're just so beautiful. She's so grateful for my confidence. Mm. I've got romantic friends now. I've had, I had a friend the other day just come into my house with flowers and just to tell me I'm beautiful. Mm. It makes you feel good. When you're surrounded by good people, it makes you feel good. Yeah. Um, I would give also a little advice, and this is not from a mom perspective, but I was asked earlier how, as a bigger girl, you can feel confident. Some, just look in the mirror and say things that you love about yourself. Ignore the parts that you don't, 
the parts that you think you want to work on, the parts that you, but just give yourself some self love every single day. Game changer. You know what? Also, I also want to say something. And um, someone body shamed me the other day, and I remember I was so pissed off about being body shamed by this person because mm. this person is very dear to me. Mm. And they said it in such a nonchalant way. Like, it was just like, whatever. Like, oh, fix your stomach. And yeah. that's what they said. She was just like, fix your stomach. Um, and then she just like carried on with the conversation. Mm. It was just like, oh, fix your stomach. Oh, can I have some more margarita, by the way? See, I have I too much of a sassy mouth to have let that. Mm. So I sassed. I sassed. And then I realized. Then when I sat down, I'm like, I stood up for myself for a reason. Guys, your your body is not everything. Right now, I'm actually getting bored of it. Everybody looks the fucking same. Mm. Everybody's dating the same man. Everybody's wearing <laughs> the same face beat. Everybody's in the same wig. We all look the same. People look the same. It's okay for you to look the way you look. Because at the end of the day, like, if you had to die today, would that be important? Mm. I, like, I thought about it. I'm like, okay, you've said this to me. But if I die today, if you had to lose me as a person today, mm. if I was dead, would that be important to you? Would that last statement be like something that you'd be able to live with? Mm. I'm I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm, it. Honestly, I'm over it. Yeah. Um, you you will get the body and then you won't have the teeth. You'll get the teeth and then you won't have the eyes. You'll get the eyes and then you won't have the hair. Mm. Yeah. Remember, it all continues over on the socials at Lesoho underscore Tabby. Now let's get back into convos and cocktails. Okay, so we're now on the topic of dating. You know, so I'm going to ask you some more viewer questions. Sure. Um, and this one you've kind of answered, but it says sex after the storm. So after a baby and healing, my sex drive is down. Is this normal or not? Very normal. Extremely normal. Um, what can they do to maybe so, know, bring it back? Um, yeah, I personally struggled with this. I mm. personally, personally struggled with this. And the only way I got back, I think it was after I stopped breastfeeding. Mm. Definitely, because then my estrogen levels went up. And then also when I finally um, got lube, mm. lube was very important. It's a game changer. Yeah. So in general, you don't have to be like guys. Just lube now. Yeah, go lube, now. Lube is great. So when I used lube, and then I got back, I remembered the sensation. Mm -hmm. Then there was something to crave again. Yeah. So your sex drive is also low because you have nothing driving you. Mm. Right. So remember the sensation. So go back to sex, use lube, um, speak to your partner, have fun. Please watch porn, please. I'm an advocate for that. Yeah. Please, guys, don't watch other people who've been. Yeah. <laughs> don't watch revenge porn. No, no, please don't do that. Um, but now speaking of, you know, hormones and getting them back, do you advocate for people taking sort of supplements? Like, you know, men have Viagra. I'm not really sure what women have, but in order to get like, okay, now my estrogen is down. I are there like things that should do? You, should we? Should There's they? like a pink pill for women. Okay. Uh, look, I'm not prescribing it, but if you want to. Sure. So. So okay. what? <laughs> okay. Yeah. But if you die or anything like that, that's between you and God. Not that's if you between, die. <laughs> I'm not saying you're going to die, guys. But if anything <laughs> happens, that's between you and God. I'm saying, like, you know what? Take charge of your life. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to explore, explore. Guys, life is so short. Mm -hmm. Life is so short. Life is so short. You're not going to be, you're not going to do everything right. You're not going to get everything right. Yeah. Do whatever you need to do. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think there's hormone supplements that I would really suggest for anybody, especially when they're young. It's only for your postmenopausal people where it's really necessary for them to be on the hormone replacements because they really struggle mm -hmm. without the estrogen. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God, the collab. I didn't know we needed two of my faves. No question. Just geeked. <laughs> Love it for us. And I'm going to name her now. Tozama, thank you so much. Thank you. I love you. Um, what is the best way to settle on a parenting style? Okay, let's get into like now you and your partner parenting because you are first time parents. Yeah. You are now learning what kind of parent you don't know. You might, this guy might be sweet. He might be kind. He might be, but you don't know what kind of father he's going to be until he becomes one. Yeah. So how do you settle on a parenting style or agree on a parenting style with your partner slash co-parent? Respect and communication. So... When they say that, Gataho, I'm not happy when you do this. So I, I won't lie to you guys. I do shout. Mm -hmm. I raise my voice. And, and it's something I'm, I'm trying to unlearn. Mm -hmm. It's how I was raised. So I'm trying to unlearn that, right? 
Um, and my partner said that one thing he saw or he realized is that my child is starting to scream because I scream, okay. right? So with that, I need to respect him mm. and stop screaming, all right? Um, I like his parenting style. He's just not as as rigid as I need. Like sometimes you do need to enforce rules mm -hmm. and um, his baby girl just plays on his mind like she gets away with a lot of stuff but i can see that i'm rubbing off on him yeah in terms of like how to be like stern not shouting though like how to be stern and say no nia you don't do this especially yeah. now because she can communicate so now she's in the that i can't stage so like when you say nia time to sleep she says no i can't sleep so we say that now to her When she says, mommy, I want to watch Baby Shark. No, I can't watch Baby Shark. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they pick them up from TV. Yeah. Know, or like yeah. an external factor. I, I feel like people place a lot on the parents. There's so much that kids, I think, pick up. Yeah, no, they oh, do. Look at me being... They do. I love an that. expert. <laughs> yeah. But no. Um, so yeah. So it's just respect and communication. And then that's how you get to your parenting style. Mm -hmm. um, you'll figure your way out. Please don't... Um, a lot of the things that we we get taught or we conditioned to believe is the right way to communicate. Mm -hmm. If you can see is harming your child, stop it. Yeah. No, don't shout. I shout. Guys, I'm so irritable as a person. I won't lie to you. And I, I need to be honest with you because people think like we're perfect, whatever. I don't know how many DMs I get like, oh, you guys are so perfect, whatever. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I promise you I lose my knackers i go <laughs> wild i go ballistic guys i am a planner you see i always plan events i'm a planner mm -hmm. so i want certain things in order children have no order yeah i don't know what order they come from you know so my child sometimes feels like a little bit of an enemy and i let her know that <laughs> so yeah yeah But I think it seems to be that compromise is the best thing. Like he's learned a bit of sternness from you. You're learning how to be more gentle. Yeah. And shouty with him. Yeah. So that seems to be. But gentle a, parenting, I just need to say. Not I, gentle with that, the TM because I, you know, gentle parenting. I ah, love how every generation of mom ah, thinks they've got it on lock uh, until they have a kid. And then it's that, like. That thing's going to make you depressed. <laughs> yeah. There's a that thing's going to give you a problem. Our mom shout. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't. Hi, little Tommy. <laughs> Go to the eyes. Tommy, put a little piece away. That's how children no, Tommy here. <laughs> Tommy, <laughs> and they yeah. just need to know that. You know, yay! They just need to know. Yeah, just a yay, <laughs> not a yay. You get it? A yay. <laughs> yeah, you must yay a little bit. Oh yeah. my goodness! Okay, so <laughs> you cry with tears. You like I do. Mellow. Every time I it's laugh, so it's so boring. It's so boring, especially when you glance. Guys, you know I once did her makeup so and she cried the. Yeah. <gasps> Do you remember? Fuck, it was for a shoot also that time. So I needed to be pretty doctor. But you were gorgeous. Got to her with her many side hustles and ambitions and joy. Yeah, she was so gorgeous. But then but, she oh, came it was such a bad day for you. It was a terrible day. It was, woof. And it was after her birthday. Guys, it was after her birthday. She was so happy. She had come from her birthday. I'm sorry to speak about this, but no, I have I, to. Go, go. Off. She had come from her birthday. She was so happy. How do you from remember birthday. all of this? This is so crazy. Because I love you. Oh. She had come from her birthday. No. So, okay. I need to tell you guys how Lisa Rotlavi and I know each other. Coconut cows. And she was like, please stop calling me that. Uh, please. So, she was um, you calling that in person. She wanted to book me for her book. I was going to be on a book. Yeah. Yeah. And she. We couldn't, just, like, we just. Uh, 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 no, not fitting. Puzzles weren't coming together, right? And then we finally. Right? For a magazine cover. For a magazine. Uh, My first. Yeah. Let's not talk about that situation. I was so excited. But anyway, and she, you look gorgeous. I know you, she had to go home and get her own dress. I'm sorry about that. Because yeah. the that styling team just didn't cater for me because I was not, I gave them my size like two months before, just by the way. I didn't lie about it. It was there, but they just didn't bring. That was shit. Girl, I they even said, so can you just have it open in the back? I was like, are you fucking mad? Are you fucking mad? Yo, I was. Are you I fucking mad? Sad and then day. they tried to blame me for her being unhappy. Then I sent you a long text. Do you remember that? Yes, because I had to leave and go get it. I was like, I'm not. I'm. First of all, I should have just. Such if I was this age, I would have just left and not come back. I was so young in like just happy to be there kind of thing that I came back. But had it been 2023, I would have just gone. I'm actually so shocked that you did that. I'm Because I was like young, Brian. It was my first one. I also didn't want the reputation of being difficult. Like I had so many overthoughts in my head. Girl, can we get back to the motherhood? Anyway, 
That's how we went. I'm sorry. It was very important <laughs> for us to speak about this because everybody goes through this experience. I felt so bad for you. I felt so terrible. And that was another example of what I was saying where people just don't cater for you when you're So you know how you invisible. felt that day? Yeah. Is literally how I felt at Saint. That's how I feel every day or how I felt every day. You know how... The, I remember the first you spoke time about it. after losing a certain amount of weight, did I feel like I can be included in conversations on? I've dressed kind of similarly the whole time, but you there have. were certain things that I wasn't able, or certain styles that I wasn't included in the conversation because they didn't cater for that size. It's guys, it is guys, a crazy, it's a real crazy thing. thing. This is just about exclusion. That's all, and you will feel that as a mother. Yeah, that's all. That's what I wanted to yeah. say. Yeah, and as a mother, we just feel it all the time. As someone who grows up. You know, being overweight or plus size or whatever they want to sure. call it. I'm so sorry. Anyway, this is a question um, about breastfeeding. My son stopped breastfeeding at three months. Okay. But now he sucks on my breast, but the milk has dried up. Is there any way I can restart the process of producing milk? He is now eight months old. He stopped so it's breastfeeding. been five months since she stopped breastfeeding. He stopped breastfeeding at three months old. No. And <laughs> not no. And now he's eight months old and he wants to start I guess or he's sucking on the breast again so Nia does that no no what's no like no? I, I I could be wrong though I could be wrong they can't speak to a speech um, a speech therapist because they're lactation consultants mm-hmm. and maybe they can help her try get the pumps out but once that hormone goes down prolactin once it goes down it goes down mm. so what happens is in the breast um, we have there's a there's a feedback system, right? So your your breast gets told that there's something that wants milk, mm-hmm. and it sends that to your brain, and then your brain says, "Okay, cool, I'll produce milk," right? But there's also an enzyme, apparently, or no, it's a protein. It's a protein. Mm-hmm. I, I studied on this. It was so random. There's a protein that builds up in your in your breast, and it will build up more when your child is not breastfeeding. And basically it like, it literally, it does leave room for milk to be produced. So I don't think so. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe um, there's a miracle woman out there who (laughs) has breastfed after five years. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Um, I promise you, I wanted the same thing to be quite honest with you. When I had dried up, I really wanted to go back and yeah, no. Okay. So I don't know if we, I mean, yeah, I guess how often should baby bottles be changed? Oh, so they actually tell you, uh, not they tell you. So your bottles have like a, an age limit, right? So the, or the teats. Mm-hmm. So change the teats. So the teats will tell you like th- um, one, one, one month to three months or whatever. Then change those. I used to just change my teats. I didn't actually change the actual bottle mm-hmm. because we were sterilizing it quite often. Um, but if you're really not happy with them, then you can change them. It's your prerogative. Yeah. My child is fine. She's lived on the same bottles. The only thing is that we moved up with the steps, mm-hmm. with the ages. That's the only difference. Yeah. Okay. And we changed um, the teats because she is a carnivore and she eats her <laughs> teats. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is last question from the viewers, I guess. Advice on tips for quick healing of the scar after a C-section. Is there a tip or do people just have to wait it out? So everybody's different and it depends on your surgeon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if they really rip through you, then you're going to feel it for quite some time. Um, so with me being mobile was very, was very, um, important. Um, and also, um, keep up with your, with your painkillers. So what people think, pe- how people take painkillers is not the right way. Mm-hmm. And that's why they normally think they don't work. Like people don't think Panada works or paracetamol, sorry, paracetamol doesn't work. Um, and it's because they don't take it the right way. Yeah. So you need to take your medication, as prescribed. So every eight hours you take your, your, your tramadol or whatever they give you, right? Mm -hmm. You must take it in those eight hours. Don't wait for you to get the pain and then take it. Okay. So when you do that, then you make sure that you don't definitely don't get to the pain and then you can be more mobile. The, when you're mobile, there's a lot of... I've um, actually been taking painkillers wrong my whole life then. Yeah, a lot of people do that. I once like uh, I once changed my friend's life. She had a flu. And I literally put her on a schedule of how to take her medication. She was like, I'm moved. 
She's like, I didn't even know paracetamol could work this way. Yeah. But anyway, um, so with the scar, you just need to get a lot of blood flow mm. and to get blood flow so that you can get nutrients in that area and then it can start to repair itself. So to do that, you need to be active. Yeah. And for you to be active, you shouldn't be feeling pain. So keep up with your pain medication and then, yeah, so forth. Okay. I hope that makes sense. It does. Yeah. I actually have some more questions, just four more. Fuck, these are so interesting and so different from the rest of what we've been talking about. So I really want to ask them. Yeah, sure. This uh, lady says she's, and I suppose you don't know it from a personal experience, but how would she navigate dating after dating after a baby? I guess she's single. Um, yeah. What would yeah, you recommend for, for single moms and how to t- navigate dating? Yeah. So obviously I can't speak from mm. personal experience, but I have a friend. Yeah. And she has shared with me it's very hard. Mm. Um, the only thing I always say to her, what I encourage her is that you just need to get yourself out there. Mm. Two, don't shame yourself for having a child. I don't know why. A lot of people shame themselves. Yeah. It's like they're dirty now that they have a child or they're unwanted mm. goods now that they and have a child. there's so many men who are willing to st- not even step up and be stepfathers. Not everyone is going to be a yeah. Russell Wilson. And nobody but should just be, be. date. Just date. Doesn't And you shouldn't, you shouldn't go out there looking for a father mm. for your child. As I said, you have a separate life to your child. Obviously, don't put someone that's going to be dangerous to your child, mm. but don't put that as the president, like the one, the the biggest thing, right? Find a partner yeah. for you. Once you find a partner for you, definitely if that person has the same values as you, they will love your child, mm-hmm. right? Um, but yeah, so date yourself first. Be comfortable with yourself. Then you'll know what you want out there mm-hmm. and you'll know what you want to offer to someone. Yeah. Love that. Um, okay, so please can you talk a little bit about how isolating early motherhood can be? I feel so alone. So isolating. <sighs> I was and what so do you need from your once. friends? Like, how do we as friends step up? Actually, just to circle back and close off that conversation. So I wouldn't yeah. know. I wouldn't know because at that time, shame. And and I hope my other friends don't see this and be like, ah, oh, but Kaz, you didn't say this. Mm. At that time, there was a certain there was a certain friend group that I wanted support from, and they basically I felt turned their backs mm. on me. Um, and yeah, it was so isolating. But you also sometimes isolate yourself. Yeah. Um, yo, it's just a period that you really have to go through. Mm. Honestly, I didn't realize that until it was done that I had to go through that time because I had to spend time with myself and I had to start to understand who I am because who I am is important to my child mm. as well. Um, and then I just like said to myself, like, get over yourself, find your mom. But you also got like, yeah, like start falling in love with Gatleho again. Um, and go, to, go to the people who want to be there. People who want to be there for you. Start bringing them in. There are definitely people in your definitely. life that really want to be there. Mm. Open yourself up and join the Clueless Mom group. There's so many people who have who have made friends in our Clueless Mom WhatsApp group. Love so, that. So yeah, on we'll share Instagram, that. Clueless Moms underscore ZA. Yeah, underscore ZA. Sorry we had to put an underscore. Someone stole my name. <laughs> okay, this is the second last question. Quick yeah. fire. Is it normal to have dry, itchy nip- nipples in the second trimester? Oh. Uh, Maybe, yeah. Maybe you <laughs> have yeast infection. Yeah, so you have to go check that out. Okay. Yeah. And the last one, and I know that, I actually, I don't know this, um, but could you touch a little bit on miscarriage? Because we are speaking about uh, moms who have been able to have their babies, but there's also moms who are not, who have not carried to term. So how common is miscarriage and how how successful are pregnancies that happen after miscarriage? Sure. Do you I don't know the that? stats. Okay. But they definitely, people definitely do have children after mm. miscarriages. Um, and I, I mean, also it's dependent on why you had the miscarriage. Did they address the reason why you had the miscarriage? Mm. Was it just a thing of like, it just happened? Then that's fine. Then a lot of people then do get pregnant. Yeah. But if there is a reason, then it needs to be addressed. And you need to have a conversation with your gynae. I have a pregnancy loss group actually on whatsapp where people support each other so how do people fight that just message it's, you an, on it's on my it's so on my instagram i have a link tree mm-hmm. and it's part of my link tree please get into that group it can sometimes be morbid i i see them they, they're sometimes very sad mm. but they sometimes sh- that is necessary yeah but they share a lot of tips with each other and mm-hmm. yeah some of them have had successful stories i actually have one which i'm very happy about mm. i can't wait till she announces that's amazing. All right, for just before we go, you are doing a pap smear drive as part of your work as a doctor because yes. I just called a for 
Uh, tell us a little bit about your pap smear drive. Yes. So I'm now working with Lumidam Medicals and in collaboration with Via Health, mm-hmm. which is um, a women's health um, group brand that I'm working with. Mm-hmm. We have embarked on a pap smear drive. So for 180 Rand, you can come into any one of our two branches. So we based in Santon at UMed Santon, mm-hmm. as well as in Pretoria at 317 Pretoria Street. And yeah, you can come in for your pap smear for 180 Rand. You also get a consultation and a breast examination. And at some places you get to meet me. I'm joking. Pearl. But I've had I've had a very positive, we've had a very positive time. And I just want to say that it is very important. Mm. We've already picked up people that we need to intervene in, yeah. right? Where they need medical intervention. And that is a group that is normally like missed or um not looked at. Mm. And yeah. Very important. Pap smears are very, very important. And just quickly, what do people pick up on pap smears? I mean, we should know this, but there are some people who just don't go to gynees. What are we looking for in a pap smear? Okay, so pap smears looks at um, the cells in your cervix, right? And it can tell us abnormalities of the mm-hmm. cell, of the cells. So it can tell us if you have an infection. Um, normally it will tell you about your bacterial vaginosis, which is BV. Um, also tell you about a yeast infection. Mm-hmm. But it can also tell us if you have precancerous cells uh, or if you actually have cancer mm. and also um, cells that are typical of HPV. Cool. Thank you Infection. so much. Guys, follow her on Instagram. Follow done. the link tree. I know. Same Z's. It's And you are actually one of the last few guests of the season. In fact, the, the last official guest of the season. So sad. Um, so thanks for coming through, no, making time, you. wearing pink. You just happened to know it was the color. I didn't even tell you. Yes. <laughs> but guys, yes, please come to Lumida Medicals. Please, please, please. Yes. I want more patients. I really want to treat more people. I really Girl, think you I'm, like I'm, yesterday. I'm, I'm coming. such a good doctor. They're coming. <laughs> we believe you. They're oh, coming. Please believe me. My <laughs> babies love me. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Katlako, for joining us. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Converse and Cocktails. It has been great. It's been amazing. Sure. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're You're amazing too. Bye. (laughs) Season 3 Convos and Cocktails produced by the Sukhot Labi and WMG and recorded at Vodcast TV Studios. Remember, this podcast is streamable on Spotify and other major streaming platforms.